It's believed there was a faulty lock on a door of the van used to transport them. The male was being taken to the hospital for a vasectomy. And Rachel Smith is from the Humane Research Australia Group and she joins us now from Melbourne. Rachel Smith, welcome. So a lot of people found this baboon story humorous yesterday. How do you feel about it? I don't think it's a humorous issue. Um, I think that a lot of people are surprised that these primates are being used because there's generally lack of awareness that primates and baboons are being used in research in Australia. Um, I think people are amused because of the vasect vasectomy angle, but we don't know the intricacies of this research, but based on the case studies we have of previous research using baboons in Australia, there are welfare implications, ethical implications, ethical implications and scientific implications of that research. Yeah. So the minister is saying they weren't being taken to the hospital for research, it was for a vasectomy, but the primates did come from a facility in Western Sydney where primates are bred for medical research. So yes. how many primates are being held around the country now and being bred for medical research? The estimate we have, which is based on the 2017 statistics we've compiled, and it's a conservative estimate that there is about 272 primates used um, in 2017, so there may be more held in the breeding facilities. There's three breeding facilities across Australia, the Sydney one and two in Victoria. And uh, our estimation of the numbers held in the Sydney breeding facility is about 165 baboons. And what happens to them? The previous studies that we have profiled, they've been used in um, reproduction studies, also investiga investigations into um, tendon repair after surgery and some radioactive tests. Mm. And so do you know what, you've mentioned a couple of things there generally, but do you know, can you describe just for the regular person out there what's known about what, what, actually, what is done to them? It depends on the particular research. I don't know. Um, the, it's very difficult to find the information about mm. the research that is taking place at the moment because there's quite a lot of secrecy surrounding it. And the information we acquire is generally post-research when the academic articles are published. And in the past, there may have been, um, with the tendon research, um, tendon damage was um, instigated into the primates and then um, an analysis of the repair process. So it does depend on the particular mm. research. Um, there's also been preeclampsia research, so there may be regular tests um, of, of blood pressure or other measurements. And what do you know about the conditions in which they're held? We don't know all that much about the conditions of the New South Wales facility. We have in the past um, found out some very disturbing information about the breeding facilities in Victoria in which there were deaths reported which we acquired through freedom of information requests and I have read in reports that in the um, Sydney facility there has been deaths due to aggression between the baboons. Mm. Now authorities say this research is important in finding treatments for things like pregnancy issues, diabetes, kidney disorders and vascular diseases in humans. What, what do you make of that argument? I think that those conditions, it's very important that we find a cure or improvements to the treatments that are currently offered, but our position is that there are human relevant methods of finding that. And because of the so many differences between primates and humans biologically, a lot of the findings will not translate, they're not predictive to humans. So we would like to see an investment in human relevant research. Mm. So that could be um, examining human tissues. So there's a great advancements in biotechnology, so growing mini organs, cells on a, um, tissues on a cell, using human cells and making sure that the findings are more predictive to humans. Mm. And how transparent are authorities about animal research in Australia and what happens at these facilities? We struggle with the transparency. There's great discrepancies between the different states and territories. Some provide annual return data on the animals that they've used, the purpose and the severity. Some don't. They all report according to different frameworks, so it's very difficult to compile a national overview of what's happening. Um, we acquire our information through information from people working in the institutions, freedom of information requests, and investigative journalists, but often the information we are requesting is denied. We have asked for a list of the research institutions mm -hmm. and even that information is not supplied to us. So should there be more transparency and should medical experiments be allowed on primates at all? 
We feel there should definitely be transparency. There needs to be questions about the research, what the outcomes are, how are they relevant to humans, are they having any impact on human clinical practice or are they just acquiring information and resulting in publishing of papers without relevance to humans. Mm. And in terms of a primate use, we would like to see a ban on primates. We, we believe that no sentient animal should be used for research, but with primates there's additional concerns due to their cognitive abilities. And we would like to see a sanctuary for ex-laboratory primates in Australia. Mm. Okay, Rachel Smith, thanks for talking to us from Melbourne.